The centerpiece of the 1619 attack on capitalism is written by Matthew Desmond. He's a Princeton sociology professor. His essay is titled, In Order to Understand the Brutality of American Capitalism, You Have to Start on the Plantation. Here's just a sampling of quotes. It's not surprising that we still feel the looming presence of this slavery institution, which helped turn a poor, fledgling nation into a financial colossus. Quote, many of this data and management techniques that we now take for granted were developed by and for large plantations. Quote, American slavery is necessarily imprinted on the DNA of American capitalism, end quote. In trying to build his case that the slave industry was enormous, he says, New Orleans, quoting, boasted a denser concentration of banking capital than New York City. But critics quickly pointed out that he conveniently doesn't explain what he means by banking capital. Because the reality is that in 19, or in 1858, New York City alone had more banks than the entire future Confederacy. And Southern banking capital made up less than 80% of the, uh, the money held by New York banks alone. Hmm. The biggest problem with Desmond's essay is that he relies on the work of an academic movement called the New History of Capitalism. He quotes seven American scholars in his essay. All seven of them are New History of Capitalist Academics. This movement, which none of us have ever heard of, grew out of the 2008 financial crisis. It links all capitalism to the evils of slavery, which is ultimately the Marxist view as well. What a surprise. The scholarship of the new history of capitalism has been widely criticized, and many points uh, of it are debunked by other academics. But there is absolutely no mention of that. One of the most dangerous things about the 1619 Project is that it treats its viewpoint as historic fact, like it's digging up the real truth. Scooby and Shaggy are around. If they were just here now, we could show you what we have, all the evidence in the mystery van. They're digging up the real truth that white supremacists and capitalists have been trying to keep from you this entire time. This is so incredibly evil. The message is crystal clear. According to Desmond, responsible Americans have a choice. You can continue with your capitalist ways, buying and selling and trying to earn a living in, in a systematic racist system based on slavery, or you can support socialist policies that will begin to unravel this evil and unjust system that still oppresses all Americans. Unless you're white, I would think, because then you would be the oppressor, right? But if you don't re re repent of your evil capitalism, then you're okay with racism and injustice and making sure that those things stay smack dab at the, court, uh, at the core of American life, where they have been since 1619. As she said, her, her tact is guilt, not fact. In 1619, the, the project desperately wants to pass itself off as legitimate history, but it totally kneecaps itself by ignoring so much of the American story. There's no mention of any black Americans who su succeeded in spite of slavery due to the free market capitalist system. In the 1619 effort to take down America and imagine, let's reframe our history. Black success stories are not allowed because they don't fit with the narrative. The role of white Americans in abolishing slavery doesn't fit the narrative either. I Watch. don't see giving you credit for fighting to end an institution that you created. That's mm -hmm. just the way that I think about it. We have had uh, plenty of stories in 400 years about white heroism. Mm -hmm. And we have given outsized attention to what we consider good white people. I think it was important not to give white people that escape when they were reading this. Mm -hmm. A lot of actual historians are not buying into the 1619 Project uh, and what they're trying to sell. Last December, five prominent historians from Princeton, Brown, City University of New York, and Texas State all signed a letter to the New York Times expressing their dismay at, quote, some of the factual errors in the project and the closed process behind it, end quote. The letter says the project's errors, quote, 
suggest a displacement of historical understanding by ideology, end quote. Now, that's an amazing statement because, remember, the historians who signed this letter are not Fox News contributors. They probably agree with the New York Times 99% of the time. But about the claim that America fought the Revolutionary War to protect slavery, they say, quote, every statement offered by the project to validate it is false, end quote. They also express concern about the project's fact-checking process. Quote, those connected with the project have assured the public that its materials were shaped by a panel of historians and have been scrupulously fact-checked. The selective transparency deepens our concern, end quote. And they end by asking the New York Times to, quote, issue prominent corrections of all of the errors and distortions presented in the 1619 project. We also seek for the removal of these mistakes from any materials destined for use in schools, end quote. Spoiler alert. The New York Times did not make any corrections. Instead, it published a 2100-word response from the editor-in-chief disputing the historian's letter. Later, a second group of 12 historians from 12 separate universities, including Notre Dame, Uh, Yale, Villanova, Michigan State all signed a letter to the Times raising their concerns. They said, quote, the 1619 Project offers a historically limited view of slavery. The breadth of 400 years and 300 million people cannot be compressed into a single size interpretation. Yet, the 1619 Project asserts that every aspect of American life has only one lens for viewing, and that is slavery and its fallout, end quote. The Times editor-in-chief replied that no corrections here are warranted. Three months later, after receiving a lot more heat from more historians across the nation, the Times finally did make one correction to the, new, uh, to the uh, 1619 project. They added some of, end quote, to the following passage. One of the primary reasons some of the colonists decided to declare their independence from Britain was because they wanted to protect the institution of slavery. Even that doesn't work. The king was a slave trader. The king liked slavery. After all the back and forth and all of the criticism from prominent historians, they added two words as a correction to their lie. But it softened the lie, didn't correct it. The 1619 Project came out waving the flag that it is legitimate history. But when it came under fire from real historians, both left and right, both black and white, they started waving a different flag. The 1619 Project is not a history. It is a work of journalism that examines the modern and ongoing legacy of slavery. Oh. So you've been presenting it in history, but it's not history. It's not bad history. It's journalism. Bad journalism? Or is this what journalism is supposed to do? Because they haven't gotten the facts right on anything for a quite some time. So maybe it is journalism. Why would the New York Times ignore all these strong criticisms if they were wanting to produce an earth-shattering true work of history or journalism? Because the agenda is is not ultimately about history. It is just yet another vehicle in the fleet now driven by elites in America toward socialism.